Hello and welcome back. In the previous episode, we've managed to summon a menu, select a character and change the skeletal mesh of our character in the viewport. Now we're going to give them different outfits. And we're going to do that by changing the material that's currently on the character. In fact, let's have a quick look at where we are so far. If I go and run our current project in the Unreal Editor, I can run around with, whoops, I can, hello, uh, there we go. I can run around with Businesswoman and then press the left Alt key and then pick a different character. So this is changing the actual skeletal mesh of our player character. And you can, you can see that the, that the outlines of the character are changing, but the Sinti guys have basically in every pack provided different textures and different materials that let us define that leave the skeletal mesh in place, but define different colors on all these surfaces. So imagine all the colors taking on a different color and a different combination. So instead of a blue uniform, we could have a black uniform or a gray uniform or a green uniform, that so and so forth. And that is true for all the characters. They all have different attributes, and we're going to have a look at how we can add them to our characters at the click of a button. So much like before, if we head over to our character file here, mine is called the Sinti character. If I open that up and head over to the viewport, I can go and select the mesh component here. And like before in on the right hand side here, when I change the mesh manually here, we've managed to do this programmatically. And now we're going to do the same thing with the material, which is down here under materials. And that is currently set by default to matte polygon city texture 01 underscore A. But if I change that to matte polygon city texture 02 underscore A, then the woman looks completely different. She's wearing a blue dress and she's got red hair now. That's cool. I can also set that to various other things, namely 3A. It takes just a second to compile that there in the, for Unreal Engine. And I can use 4A. There's various other materials that we're going to talk about in the next episode. So we're going to essentially do this programmatically next. I'll leave it on the green outfit here, it doesn't matter. And I'm going to go back into my content browser, make that a little bit bigger, and just show you where these things are hiding. In my case, they're of course under Polygon City, under Materials, and there's quite a lot of them. I don't really need all of them, so I'm going to put the ones that I don't really want to deal with into a folder here, just so that it, the, it visually looks a little bit less you know, distracting. Other Sinti packs or other Polygon packs from the Sinti Studios, they have that already, but uh, this one does not. So I'm going to go and create myself a new folder and uh, I'm going to call that, I don't know, MISC perhaps, it doesn't matter. Then we're not going to delete them, we're just going to put them in there so that I can show you visually the materials that we're going to focus on in this episode. So I'm going to go and select all of these here. I'm going to leave essentially anything that's called matte polygon city texture 01A to 04C intact. And everything else just gets slid into here and I'll, I'll say move. So Unreal Engine is quite clever. It'll just recognize all the references. I'm just going to go move them to a slightly different part here. A little bit of housekeeping. Move that over here. I should then be left with 12 materials, but it looks like I'm not because there's a couple of others in here. They're emissive materials. Those are the ones that are used on buildings where in a night level where the lights are on so that they're actually emitting light. I don't need those either. So those are all the ones that are called emissive at the end. That's this one and this one and this one and that one. It doesn't really matter if you put them into this folder or not. This is just so that we can talk about this a little bit better and I can show you what um, what the consequences are of putting different materials on. So you see quite a lot here. You see the Polygon City 01 in three different flavors. B and C are for different skin tones, but for the same material, for the same kind of outfit. So we're going to focus on 1A, 2A, 3A, and 4a. Those are the materials we want to pass into a function and then change it on the character. I'm not going to do this with the menu. I'm going to do this with the keys 1, 2, 3, and 4. And I'm going to code this in the Sinti character here, actually, in the event graph here. I think I don't need hide and show menu anymore. Let's close this down. Menu shenanigans, I don't need that anymore either for now. It might come back. 
don't need the construction script right now, but what I will need is probably a different event graph so that I can put the switch logic in there. I'll go and do that. New event graph, call it switch logic. That keeps it all nice and tidy and away from my actual menu or away from the movement components. That's why I'm doing that. I just want to keep things a little bit more compartmentalized. So before I start coding in here, I'm going to have to set up these key presses. Since I want to make this project gamepad compatible as well later, I'm going to set this up under Edit, Project Settings, Input. Much like we've set up the Summon Menu key here with the Alt Left key. I'm going to do a few more. Oops, that was, that was the wrong one. I didn't mean to click that. I meant to click this one here. In fact, four of them. One, two, three, four of them for all four different outfits. And I'm going to call that one Outfit 1. I'll map that to the one key on the keyboard. Next one is going to be called Outfit 2. And that will be mapped on the keyboard to the two key. I believe we can actually just type that key in. Let's try this out, outfit three. And then if we go and just type this into search in number three, then I can see that the three key under the keyboard section comes up. That's exactly the one we want. And then we have outfit four. Boom, excellent. I don't need to do anything else, but these events can now be mapped to other keys as well, such as gamepad keys, which we're going to do later. Let's close this down and go and grab these events out here. There we go. Action event outfit one to four. So they're all going to be hooked up. But right now, I just want to see if it actually works. I'm sure it does. We can just go hook this up to a print string and really do nothing and just go and play the level and hope that when we press the one key, a message is, is being displayed like hello. So that it, it does work in principle. I always like doing that from time to time. So that works, that's nice. Now I could code the actual logic in here, but because I need to pass a mesh, it's smarter to let a compartmentalized function deal with this. So before I hook anything up, I'll go and create myself another function over here. And I'm going to call that one change outfit. The function should take one input parameter, namely the actual outfit we want to give it, which is then the material. So let's make that happen. Under inputs, I will select one, which is called new outfit. And that is a type of material. That's the one down here, the one that doesn't have anything else afterwards. So not material sprite element or proxy settings, just plain old material. And that is that. Comes up with a little kind of blue square icon. And we're going to go and apply that material on our mesh, just like we applied the skeletal mesh. Now we're going to apply a material on the mesh. And from here, I'm going to go drag out and say set material. Not material by name, just material. I'll hook that up and that's literally almost done. So now we need to go and tell this node what material we want to set. And that's of course the one that's being passed in. So we're just going to go and connect the new outfit with that material node over here. And that's our change outfit function done. What this allows me to do now is go back to my switch logic and then hook it up just like I did uh, with the other functions. So I'm going to go and hook the key up to change outfit, whoops, change outfit. And in here, I can now go and pick the outfit that I want. So I think on key one, I'd like the A texture to be on here. So matte polygon city texture or one A, I'll put that on here. Then the next outfit, that's going to be for key number two, that'll also get this function. I can probably just go and copy this and paste that, hook it up again, and then pick the next material on our list, which is not 1B, it's 2A. So these are 1A, 2A, 3A, and 4A. 
and perhaps we're going to go and put that over here do the same for outfit number three paste that in there hook that up and make that 3a and then last but not least outfit number four will be 4a and the nice thing about that is i can conveniently switch my material here and let the same function take care of everything even though it's a tiny function if ever we wanted to do something about that maybe add an effect or whatever before that the that the material doesn't just change immediately we only have to do that once inside that function and it's just you know nicely nicely coded it's nicely nicely coded it that way let's see if it actually works that is also um, you know always there's always a plus isn't it we go and try it out. Here's our businesswoman in the green outfit, our new default that I've just set. Uh, I can press number one, then she goes into gray. Number two will get her into the blue mode. Number three will get her into the red suit. And number four will get her back into the green suit. And the awesome thing is that'll work on every character. So let's have a look what that looks like on businessman here. He has white shirt, pink shirt, and he's also got red hair all of a sudden. And blonde hair with a blue shirt. And brown shirt with a nice mauve type cut tie here. Very nice. So you get the picture. This is now going to work with every character. And it didn't really take us all that long at all. Look at our little security guard here. Now he's a policeman. Now he's a, I don't know, border control guy. And now he's a security guard. That is amazing. At the touch of a button. And then, of course, you can dismiss the menu and run around like that. Very cool. So what we've done here is we haven't changed the skeletal mesh. Well, we have changed the skeletal mesh with our button clicks here. But when we go and change the outfit, we've actually, it's a bit like smoke and mirrors, isn't it? If we basically have retained the current skeletal mesh and just changed the material that is applied to that mesh and thereby changing the look and feel of the character. And that about wraps this episode up. In the next one, we will look at how we can use the other eight textures that are still available in the Sinti packs and use them to retain the outfit and change only the skin tone of our character. That's going to be very exciting because it means I have to look what outfit are they wearing and then react to that. So it's going to be a similar concept, but slightly more complicated. Join me for that in a moment.